got to seal it, how we did it was we actually had to balance it on our lap. You can see here, I'm going to go and give it a jig. You can see it just comes right on. See, there it goes, sealed. And you'll see on the bottom as well. Right, so we'll give it a lift here for you. See there, it's sealed. Just going to put it. Well, I did this, and also discovering that we sealed one, we end up actually discovering there's a crack here. And this is actually where the bearings was. I think when we kind of uh, forced it in there, that's why you don't want to force things in there. Unfortunately, we did, and this is the result we got from it. What we can do is just since it's not fully uh, cracked in, we're going to go ahead and just put it with some weld. And since it's aluminum, it'll melt and uh, pretty much seal itself. So shouldn't uh, we'll deal with that a little bit afterwards when we get all the engine parts assembled. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to lift it on my lap and show you how I got it to actually pretty much close itself. I'm just using its own weight. And first of all, I'll put a towel on my lap here. Uh, not the fact that uh, it will leak any residue oil, but the fact that it does kind of, you know, this is solid uh, aluminum uh, weight here. It's going about 150, not 150, I apologize, probably about 45 pounds or so. It's like a little baby. Okay, we're going to tilt it. See me here, I'll tilt it. You can see that here. There we go. Hopefully you guys can still see it. Okay, so that's what I did here, pretty much to seal it. Uh, pretty much I balanced it on my lap. And then I just kind of jiggled this a little bit. And then you can see here, it just flushes. So I'm gonna bring the camera here to you, so that way you can see all around it. See there? It's sealed all around the paper. It's pretty much compressed thinly on it now. There you go. All the way around it. That's it. So all we did was gave it a jiggle. Uh, we didn't really have to hammer anything in or anything like that. We just kind of pretty much rocked a little bit of the thing to force that, pretty much that secondary uh, Kickstarter stud there to fall into this proper slot, as well as move things around in this whole mechanism right here that we cannot see to be able to secure itself. So now what we're gonna do is go ahead and prep up all the, the bolts. We're gonna torque it down to again, five foot pound specs. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay it back in here. Since it's up like this, I'm gonna go ahead and use a mallet hammer just to put it, that way you guys can see me bolt it down. Here we go. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and start. Pretty much again from our screw arrangement. We're not gonna put any Loctite on it, but before we actually, uh, Get prep on that one. I want to make sure this is definitely there. Fully there you go. Okay. So there goes the mallet hammers. And we're using, we're balancing it on the mallet hammer, so that's probably why. We're gonna use the other tip of it. We don't need that much height from it. There we go. Okay, so we're gonna start from the left and work our way. See the gasket now is being gapped here. I'll try to squeeze that in there again. Uh, budging this loose. All right. So now it's gonna it's coming off again. There we go. See, so all I did was move the Kickstarter, and then it clamped shell it back again. So we're gonna go ahead and start putting it in here. We got the first screw set. So you get a good angle of it. See the whole thing better. I'll get resolution. Right, I'll sign the resolution here. Okay. The so next screw set here. I put on top. You can see it. There we go. Okay. The next screw set here. These two kind of right into play. Blow off the cardboard debris. So the next one. They're different lengths. You can see them as I'm putting them in. I go right here. And we also want to make sure we line our gasket. Our gaskets probably fell down a little bit. So let's go bring back our gasket up. There we go. Gasket's coming up. And we want to make sure that this is not poking the gasket. Oh, see how the kickstart contracts? That's what's happening, it's causing it to be. There we go. Now it's back in again. So what we can do is go ahead and hand tighten these for right now. 
think we'll take our eight millimeter. Making sure our gasket doesn't get damaged there. There we go. See here, I'm going through it right now. Just get a little bit of leverage there. Righty tidy, lefty loosey. Okay. Once we get our gasket aligned the top area, it should be a little bit easier. Okay. We're not gonna tighten all the way. We're just gonna make make it help us support it a little bit so it won't gap anymore. And then we're gonna again fidget the kick stand here. Kick starter stand. There, okay, we'll get the last bolt later. So let's go ahead and give it a fidge in there. Make sure everything's aligned first. There we go, see, it comes back on again. It's flushed again. You see how it's flushed? It's all flushed now. All right, so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and secure it more in there, just hand secure it. We're still gonna torque it five pounds just for good practice. But for right now, it's best to have it hold itself in here. There we go. It's looking good. There we go. It's not gonna move anymore since it's already got three or four out of four out of ten screws securely in it now there we go and tighten as much as I can all right so you can see how it looks now very sealed okay we're gonna swing it over here that way you can see the rest of it okay there's the other one right here in the very top of the last top section I'm gonna move this out of the way that way it doesn't block the camera angle we're gonna go ahead and secure the rest of them. And then we're gonna go back and torque them, of course. Five foot pounds, again, the studs are only eight, eight millimeters in diameter, but the bolt itself, I'm so sorry, uh, the studs right here for the lug nut is eight millimeters, but the, the stud itself where the threads are, it's only six millimeters. That's why we're only doing a five foot pound torque, which again is 60 uh, foot pound inch. Sure, our gasket, our gasket should all fall into place by now. Okay, this one's a little longer. It's gonna take a little bit more time here. You can see it right there. It's going in surely. Now each one of these studs are supposed to fall exactly the way it's supposed to. And not my socket, but the gasket. There it goes. Cool, we got that there, hand tight as much as we can. There's another one at the bottom here. Try to lift it up so you can see as I'm doing it. Tilt it now. See there from that angle. Okay, we're gonna use the next one bottom. Again, we're just hand tightening it. Then we're gonna go back over and torque it down Here, I'm gonna go ahead and pretty pop them out and just put them in the slot. Looks like we're almost using all of our CBT uh, bolts now. And the last one. So, this box right here did its job. It stored all our screws. Remind us which one we have to re tighten and also miss, remember. So, there we go. The last one's right here. Again, don't necessarily have to put blue Loctite on this one, but because if it falls off, we'll know it falls off. It's not gonna pretty much just fall uh, easily without us feeling or hearing it jolt. Uh, and then there's about 10 screws, so it's the chance of it vibrating and all 10 coming consecutively out all at once is pretty rare. But it does happen, but it's not gonna fall all at once. Okay. 
that one's there. This one just kind of fell off, put back in there. Almost there. There we go. So next, we're getting it. It's almost coming. Last one here. You can see it? It's the last one right there in this little tucked in corner here. There we go. All right, there we go. Now we can go ahead and get the torque wrench. And again, it's set. If you remember how we torqued it, it's set already to about uh, 60 there we go 60 inch pounds okay these are inch pounds again it only goes up to 200 inch pounds so this is perfect for the small studs that we deal with here for a small engine okay Let's see if I can give it a little more incline here maybe we can go this way there we go that way you can see from the bottom here I'm going to torque it all the screws that are necessary Perfect, there we go, good angle. Okay, we're gonna go ahead, and get this one torqued. Start hearing it. There we go, snap. All right, we're just gonna keep on going. Start with the center. You can start pretty much anywhere, it's fine. Okay, it's snap. This one next. Okay. There we go. So a good torque wrench is supposed to do its job. There we go, snapped. There we go, that one snapped as well. We got the bottom one now. There we go, snap. Okay, I'm gonna let this down so that we can see from the top now. Okay, we're gonna go and torque all the top ones. There's one here in this corner here. I'm gonna tilt it so you can see it. There we go. There we go, get your snap. Okay, and then the rest, got four more on top here. And that should complete our five. There we go, snap. It won't let you go anymore with the torque wrench if it does its job. Just kind of snap, that's it. But you definitely want to take precaution once you hear the first few snaps, you want to stop. There we go. Then the next one here. There we go. All right, now it's on there. And the kickstand mechanism right there the kickstand also needs to be screwed in and it's also the eight millimeter sometimes it's 10 millimeters but in this case it's the same eight millimeter so what you want to do with the kickstand is you're thinking that you have a lot of slack you can push it all the way in but actually it needs all that slack because what it does it pushes out so when you see that it's it pushes in so it tracks in so when you push it it, it actually what it does it turns and then it retracts in more so you definitely want to flush it you want to flush it like maybe just like right there just a little pebble looking so you do want to flush it and it looks more aesthetically nicer that way so if you want to flush it you don't want to flush it against the the cover because again it needs to retract in once it goes down further it pulls it's pretty much it's stud right in so you definitely want to flush it to the outside so give it that little extension that needs to stay flush so there's and tighten much as we can. Okay, we're gonna go with a torque, the same amount, five foot pounds, until we hear it snap. There we go. Just make sure that double click there. All right, so we got that part done now. I'm gonna show you a tool that we use. You can actually uh, use a tool or don't use a tool, but you'll have to make it a little bit uh, 
with two studs to be able to put in your studs. So we're gonna go ahead and put in the studs just like this one right here, where we're gonna take the studs. And we're also gonna rob a few more parts from here as well, because uh, again, it doesn't come with all the screws at all. So we'll need to take parts from it. The one part we need to take again will be our starter st uh, screws to hold our starter there. And we're gonna actually install a high torque one which we're gonna do that right now. Uh, pretty much we're gonna go ahead and open up a high torque starter here. It's gonna be awesome, you're gonna get to see it. There we go, let me go ahead and remove this one. We're gonna pretty much take all the studs off of this one. These are all eight millimeter studs. This one holds a starter. And we're gonna go and install our starter shortly enough. Okay, there we go, grabbed it. Okay, and then we're also gonna need this screw right here. And we're, of course, we're gonna need the lug nuts back from here, and I'll show you. If you don't have the special uh, thread remover uh, a socket, you can just take two uh, screws together, like these, that are holding it. And you can actually, we're gonna take this one off as well. You're gonna, you're gonna join them together to actually pull in the socket. And remember we talked in our previous video, uh, the longer stud goes to the right and then the shorter stud goes to the left shorter crankcase. Uh, this one right here. So we're gonna pretty much let's go and take all these screws um, so we don't lose where we're at. Let's go and put the two short one here that we got. And this one is going for the starter. We're gonna go and put our starter on. There we go, we're just gonna leave this on for right now then we're gonna go get our starter. That way we don't lose the screws where they're supposed to be. Okay, just kind of a little bit. And then this one was actually for our, our housing cover of our um, head cylinder. So we'll put that in there. And then these two screws, we're gonna go ahead and start opening this up. A little gunky, but it'll work. We'll clean this afterwards. Wow, this has a little bit of gunk in there but it <laughs> holds it very tight. Okay. This is good to prevent leaks and seals and stuff. There we go. Wow. I didn't realize it would probably leave a little bit of residue. That's okay, we got a razor blade. That should take care of it. But it's good that it protects it and not. All right, there we go old trick here use his own tape against it there we go we got most of it back off with his own skin there we go it's almost like it picks itself up everything looks good okay the chain we can let the chain back down now all right okay almost all of it is gone Pretty much from his own. We we'll probably won't use this again for covering it. Just good, pretty much t masking tape will probably be just work. Some paper one. There we go. Yeah. Okay, the rest we can just take it off with a razor blade. We want to clean the surface really well, thoroughly. All right, there we go. Okay, just get that little bath little piece here. I kind of glide it. It seems like it comes off when you glide it. So, uh, the rest again, we can take it off with a razor blade just to make sure any fine residue is not on there because we're going to put our new gasket on here once we lay the cylinder head. Okay, all right. Let's go ahead and get the new gasket here. Okay, we pretty much took all that we need and the washers as well and the dowel pins, of course. Gonna need these ones right here. They're coming off, they're coming with us. And they, these two studs, of course, earlier we were talking about. These are pretty much the whole, uh, pretty much I believe it's our cylinder. 
housing in place. Okay. You can see here this kind of residue is actually left from uh, pretty much the, the Loctite. All right. Okay, let's go and get our studs. And then our gasket, we have it hung up somewhere. There is our studs here. This was pretty much our lower chain guy. We're gonna put a new one. Get that replaced. And this is coming from again our SSPG 180 power kit. There we go. Show you two ways pretty much you can actually install your stud but the only thing is you want to do is call make sure you also put some loctite but before we do that let's go ahead and clean that residue out there we go get a razor blade here get a razor blade somewhere here right, we'll take a razor blade there to clean out all the imperfections here also gives a chance to cut out any of the imperfect gaskets that were on there all right there we go scraping it out Next time we won't actually use that anymore, we learn. So it's coming off. There's a gasket here. We want to cut off. There we go. Keep the surface clean. We'll hit it with some brake cleaner. Uh, very much a residue, huh? Lucky it's only on the outside of the crank that we put it in. Imagine if we put it inside, that would have been fun. Okay. Yep, and then that's what a gasket's for to make sure all the imperfections here are covered up. Getting there. Want to make sure we got all of it off. Very sticky. <laughs> Want to blow it outside. Okay. Let's go and hit it with some brake cleaner here and just start rubbing the rest off. Okay, that's a brake cleaner. A uh, brake cleaner dries pretty fast. And before we put our oil, we'll make sure we kind of tilt the engine downward. So here we go. There we go. That's our brake cleaner there. Get our microfiber towel, make sure it's clean. Give it a good rub off. Off that residue. I guess the engine was better without having that thing on there. <laughs> there we go. Very bad gunk. It was almost fairly new before all that residue came on it. See if we can clean some more out. Very bad. There we go. Well, it gives a good chance to also scrape off the unwanted um, gasket that we're left behind or extending. Shave it off a little bit. Make 
Again, this ga the gaskets will come in play and oh, it'll be able to seal all this nicely. Okay. Well, wherever that tape it settles in, it sure makes its mark, huh? Okay, let's go and give it some more, uh, some brake cleaner here. Out of there. Brake cleaner eats up everything, even paint. So you definitely want to be careful. Whew. But even this gunk is pretty strong for the brake cleaner to do its magic. But it's getting there. There we go. There we go. Now we're polishing it. This created a little extra work for us. There we go, looking better now. Some more brake cleaner to it. set for a little bit okay while we're doing that we're going to go there to put in our starter let the brake fluid uh, pretty much do his magic there and uh, gonna go ahead and get the um, the new uh, high torque starter by binging here I'm gonna show you how it's installed so I'm gonna bring it right now okay we got the high torque starter here from binging and this is pretty much what it looks like like it says a small dish ghost and the wires are much thicker than your standard one which you can interchange them you can uh, you know if you want the, the high gauge wire which is recommended to keep on there or you want to go with your smaller one you can see the difference with the stock ones here so we have our stock uh, pretty much see our stock wires compared to the thinness and thickness it's a lot more thicker gauge it's almost like a 10 10 gauge wire right there and the wiring. Uh, this one is actually um, it's wired a little bit differently, but you can always use this. This is a ground. It just pretty much puts the ground wire here for your wiring harness, so we can actually even disable this one. You can see so you can just take a Phillips, unscrew this one, and then they change the wires if you really wanted to. See, there you go. They're just Phillips that's holding it down. So this is your Benjing one. This benching right here is a high torque starter. And we're gonna go and apply some assembly lube in here. And I wanna show you what assembly lube looks like here. It's same, but pretty much the same molly grip. Then, but it's, it, it's our assembly lube right here. It's the same company that makes our uh, molly graphite grease, CRG by Stell Lube. So we're gonna go and apply some of this lube here. Opening them up. And cut it with a pair of pliers. Okay, cut a little bit here off, just a tip, a little bit off the tip. There we go. Let it open up its mouth. There we go, I think it's open now. Okay, so we're gonna apply a little bit of this loop here. What this loop does, it actually just, you know, lets you uh, pretty much have a head of time start. So when it actually, when the motor oil finally gets to it, the motor oil will do the most of the lubing eventually. But for right now, since it doesn't have motor oil up to that area yet, we're gonna have to apply the lube. And the lube is still not fully cut yet. Oh, okay, it's coming out. It just looked like a little pasty one. There you go, see that right there? That's the lube. We're gonna apply some lube on here assembly lube. We're not going to put much, just enough for it to not wear out the mechanism until the motor oil kicks in. And that's pretty much what assembly lube does for your engine. It's pretty much 
to, it's gonna get washed out with the motor oil. It's not synthetic, so it doesn't stay in your engine. But it's just there for a temporary uh, relief, you can say, until the motor oil kits in. That's what assembly lube is for. So we're gonna go ahead and put some, some of that in there. See it a little bit, give it a little resolution. All right, all right, that's good enough. And we're gonna put some right here where the seals is, assembly lube, so it just doesn't goes in easier too. By the way, but it's not anything spinning in this mechanism. It's just that gear right there where the teeth is is spinning. But we want to get the assembly loop in there so. It allows it to go in a little bit more smoother. There we go, that should be enough. And it's gonna spread once it gets in there. So we'll close the cap on our assembly lube. Okay, again, it's gonna face a certain direction you want the benching to show. We're gonna go ahead and see here, I get it from the top. So we're gonna go and take out these two screws again. They were just there to make sure that we know where 